What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Uh, now in this one, we'll be doing a circle to land approach. Now, uh, I don't think anybody in the DCS community, or at least I haven't seen it on YouTube, has properly done or explained what a circle to land approach is, why it might be useful, and how to do it, basically, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. Um, although we are flying a fighter jet, I've actually flown plenty of these in uh, airliners, and uh, the principles are more or less the same. Uh, so uh, I'll talk you through it, exactly what it is, how it's done, and why we do it. Today we are in the Mirage 2000, uh, the Hellenic Air Force uh, Mirage 2000, and we are approaching Akrotiri in Cyprus. Akrotiri is the uh, RAF uh, air station uh, just to the south of Cyprus over here. And uh, this is just purely for training today. So, um, you know, in reality, the reason you would actually want to do a circle approach is in case uh, on one side of the airport, there's no way of shooting an instrument approach and you have uh, lots of terrain, for example, right? So you can't actually make the approach from that side. So you have to come in from the other side, an instrument approach, you might shoot an ILS, you might uh, make a non-precision approach of some sort, a VOR approach, a localizer, a uh, TACAN, whatever it is, um, as, and you're flying downwind, right? But you can't land downwind because you might be out of limits, right? So you have to come around and land on the other side. We're going to shoot an ILS approach initially into Akrotiri onto runway 28. We're not landing. Uh, we're coming in from the east, but we're not landing on runway 28. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll fly this exactly as a normal ILS initially. Uh, we're currently established on this arc, which is a 13 DM arc from the TACAN 107 X-ray. And you guys can download these plates as well. I actually will link it down in the description uh, in case you want to practice something like this. But you can apply the same principle to basically any uh, airport uh, that has you know some sort of um, instrument approach um, and you can shoot a circle to land uh, so it doesn't have to be a criteria it could be anything uh, right so we're using a uh, TACAN a 107 x-ray that's set in the Mirage right now we are currently on this uh, radial so we're at 2100 feet I've rounded it up we're flying this 13 DME arc until we get to this radial intersecting uh, from the TACAN uh, and if you can see there it says cat C and cat D. Um, I believe a Mirage 2000 will be cat D. Uh, somebody can correct me, but I believe based on the ICAO um, approach speeds, uh, it should be a cat D airplane. Uh, the Boeing 737 that I fly is a cat C, uh, and that is purely based on the range of approach speeds that the aircraft generally flies. Uh, fighter jets are like a, a tad, a tad faster. Um, so they will, you know, they will be in that uh, higher category uh, because, you know, it takes longer for to make the turn. So as you can see here, the Cat D radial is actually a little bit before. It's 112 versus 107. Uh, so at that radial, when we're passing a beam that radial, you know, basically intersecting at 90 degrees, we start the turn uh, inbound to final, 283 uh, final track over here. Now we intercept the ILS, and this is where things get a little bit different. Uh, so instead of landing on this runway, which we won't do, to eight because we are pretending as if it's too much of a tailwind uh, to land on this and the other side has terrain, which it does in that criteria. We're just doing it you know, for practice sake. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot set the wind to be a tailwind um, in the mission editor because this is a stupid bug and I'm pretty sure it's just specific to this somehow. I don't know why, but if you change the wind in the mission editor right now in Cyprus with me in the Mirage doing this approach, the ILS and the Mirage stops working. Just stops working. Somebody can explain it to me. I have no idea. But if you change the wind in the mission editor, and it took me hours to figure out what was wrong. As a result, we have to use wind zero, which is a bit nonsense. But, you know, it, it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, we're coming in, and this is where you probably will switch over to my little diagram over here. This is what is essentially a circle to land. Now, you don't have to draw this. But I recommend that you do, and in real life, if I was to shoot a, a circle to land approach, I would, and I think most pilots would as well. I mean, yeah, you can use, use you know, quick arithmetic to work out your headings, tracks, uh, etc. Uh, but um, it's just easier to plan it all ahead and then just, you know, make reference to it as you're actually flying it. So, uh, as you can see, 283 is, our, is where we start at the bottom uh, of my little diagram, and then we... Uh, continue until we descend on the ILS, we descend down to the MDA. The MDA on this approach here can be found for the circle to land uh, over here 
in the approach plate. So he says circle to land and also says prohibited north of runway uh, 1028. And the reason for that is almost certainly because there's uh, a little bit of terrain. Or maybe they don't want you flying over that uh, city. Uh, and we are at Cat D, which is this one over here. And Cat D at the bottom, it says um, 790 feet. That is our MDA. Uh, we're going to round that up to 800 feet. Um, so that is basically the height by which, well, first of all, we need to see the runway. If we don't see the runway, we do go around. Uh, the second thing is, if we do see the runway, that is the, appro the, that is the altitude or the height at which we are actually going to level off and we're going to fly the entire circle in at that height, uh, or at that altitude, rather, I should say, in this case. Um, it's 750 feet. 715 feet off the ground. Uh, now, the next thing we need to know is the tracks that we need to fly. These are prescribed tracks, most standard circle to land tracks. There will be specific approaches which will tell you that you have to fly specific tracks. And then on top of that, you know, some operators may choose to do their own thing, I guess, and, you know, develop their own procedures for whatever specific airport, airplane, whatever. But uh, we'll stick to the kind of standard, easy stuff. Um, so the first thing we do is uh, we level off at 800 feet on the ILS, okay? We're perfectly on glide. We level off then at 800 feet as soon as we get to it uh, because we've rounded up the minima here, 790 to 800. Uh, we then make a left turn in our case because we want to fly to the south of the airfield, okay? So we're going to fly south and uh, we're going to do a 45 degree turn off to the left to do that. Now, 45 degree turn, uh, quite easy, 283 final approach track minus 45 equals 238. So 238, we get wings level and then we time 20 seconds. Now, if we have a tailwind, which we should in, you know, if this was like I could say, like I could set the wind properly like I wanted to, we would do minus half of the tailwind component. So in other words, if the wind was, let's say, 20 knots tailwind in that case, uh, then we would subtract 10. So we'll do 10 seconds instead of 20 seconds, if that makes sense. Um, and then, as soon as that time is up, in our case, it will be 20 seconds because there's no wind. Just stupid. It should be, but like I say, stupid DCS. Um, at that point, 20 seconds, we make a right turn to fly parallel downwind along the uh, the runway. Uh, so that's going to be uh, heading 283 again. That's final approach track uh, for the uh, initial approach runway uh, on the ILS. Um, and then we have, we're obviously, all of this now is visual, okay? So we're looking outside to make sure we're seeing the runway. If we don't see the runway, we do a go around because, you know, this is supposed to be a visual maneuver. Uh, but we are using prescribed, you know, tracks to fly, essentially. Um, and that's entirely just to make the whole circuit kind of neat and tidy and make it work. Uh, because these timings, they, on, although this is a fighter jet, not an airliner, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's just going to work. It's going to work for any airplane, essentially. Um, now, we then pass a beam the landing runway, which is going to be runway 1-0. As soon as the threshold passes by, we start timing 22 seconds, minus half the tailwind component. Why 22 seconds? So in this case, 22 seconds is quite specific. It depends entirely on the airport. And it is calculated by um, uh, taking the height above ground, the, uh, or, you know, above the elevation, so the, the, the height, essentially, your aircraft relative to the the runway that you're landing on. Now, in this case, we knew that uh, it was 715 feet because it's in brackets here, right? But we've actually uh, rounded up to 800. So we, we've, we're we essentially 725 feet off the ground. Now, do times three, and you will get uh, the time that you need to extend by. So in other words, uh, let's just make the math really simple here. If this was 700 feet, you do times three, and that would give you 21 seconds, right? In our case, it's a tiny bit more. We call it 22. If you want to extend by a couple of seconds, it's it's it just makes it life easier because you, you'd rather be a little too far away than too close in and then have to dive down, right? So we're going to do 22 seconds. All right, once the time is up, and like again, minus half the tailwind component, which in our case is zero currently, but if there was a tailwind, let's say 20 knots, you take half of it, 10. So 22 minus 10 would give you 12 seconds. Uh, like I say, in our case, zero. Uh, once we finish timing that, we start the right turn inbound towards the runway. And that point, we basically essentially focus our attention uh, outside and we see, you know, where is the runway, Pappy lights, etc. Alright, so another thing that we need to take into account is the speed here. It says max knots 205 for cat D, uh, which basically means you have to slow down below 205 knots. It wants you to be at 205 knots maximum when you're within the circle 
procedure, essentially, right? So you cannot exceed that. So let's give it a shot. Why not? We have two minutes inside. You're clear to disconnect the headset. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. Alright folks, so here we are in the Mirage, and just to show you, we have the Tacan 107 X-Ray set, and we are currently on the ARC, 13 DME ARC, uh, just basically just past the initial approach fix, and uh, from this point we just need to continue until the 112 radial, which we're almost there basically, we're like 116 I guess. Um, so just a little bit of flying here, and then we start the left turn to intercept the ILS. The ILS frequency is all tuned in. All right, get the autopilot off. Just start slowing down to below 250 knots as well to make life easy. And we're just about to pass the rail. There it is. So let's start our turn. It's a nice gentle turn. Switch to waypoint two. That's the landing waypoint. Go into approach mode. So now we should have the ILS approach symbology. 13 miles to run, um, and uh, we should be 2,080 feet as we pass over uh, 9.7 miles. Just make sure we don't descend as well. Below 205 knots, which is what we need for the approach as well. Let's keep the turn going. Let's make sure we don't descend. Just trim up a little bit. There is the uh, ILS symbology on the HUD. Um, now, in case you're wondering why you don't see me on the side of the screen, it's because after the first time that I've recorded this, I realized that uh, OBS gets pretty damn choppy um, in the recording when we get close to Akrotiri. So, for the visual fidelity and quality of your viewing, I have decided that uh, it's best to record without my overlay, and you guys should hopefully see a smoother, nicer picture. All right, so from here on, normal ILS until we get down to 800 feet, and from there we just transition into the circle to land. Uh, also making reference to the attitude indicator in the left-hand side there, so you can see that we are, uh, flight director is showing that we are on the localizer, but we're just below the glide, so that's why we're kind of uh, continuing sort of shallow descent at the moment until we reach the glide. Seven miles, let's drop the gear. Uh, we'll be fully configured, uh, essentially. Just make sure we trim, add a bit of thrust. Just trim for the on-speed AOA. It's a little much. Still just a touch above, uh, below the glide, I should say. So here we are, there we go. Now we're perfect. So the box is now aligned with the landing threshold, so that is perfect. And now we're perfectly on glide, on localizer. Um, you always need to make sure you've got the right QNH set because if you don't, uh, this is a huge problem, especially if you're, you know, not visual at this point and we'd be, you know, still in the clouds because we only need to be visual really at the minimum descent altitude, which in our case will be 800 feet. Um, and obviously, if you haven't got the right QNH set, you know, that could put you in a whole load of trouble. So it's called QNH blunder error. So always make sure that it is set um, correctly. Put the landing lights on. At this point, we'd be contacting the tower as well, obviously, and saying, you know, we're on final. They'd probably tell us, you know, uh, to report when we're breaking uh, downwind or, or on the dog leg or, or one of those things. Uh, but uh, obviously, in DCS, uh, the ATC doesn't really cater for circle to land approaches, so we'll just we'll just not use them. Uh, two whites, two reds, looking good. 850 feet, 840, 830, pull up. There's 800. So 90, just to send a touch low, but there we go, there's 800. Okay, start the turn left, 238 now. Let's throttle up a touch. Gentle turn on 238. That is our dog leg. Just a touch high. All right, there's 238, start timing. So looking at the clock, uh, you could use a stopwatch, it would be better, to be honest, but we'll just use the, we'll just use the clock, good old-fashioned clock. 
Just make reference to the uh, second needle. So obviously this would be minus half the tailwind component. In our case it's zero, like I say, because it's stupid DCS, even though it shouldn't be zero. I mean it should be it should be some sort of tailwind. But um, anyway, time's up. Start the turn. So now we're uh, turning back. We've just climbed a little bit, so we're just going to descend a touch back to 800 feet. Um, we're back onto a reference heading of 283. So fly parallel with the runway. Again, these should all be tracks, not headings, really. Um, but again, because zero wind heading and track will be the same thing in our case. Right. Here we are, 283. Let's continue downwind. Having a look at the runway there. It's good. Uh, so looking for the approach threshold. Once we get to the approach threshold, we'll start timing again. It'll be 22 seconds um, and uh, minus half the tailwind component. And obviously, you know, in our case, that's zero, stupidly. All right, so we just passed it there. Um, so have a look at the clock again. Just a touch high again. Just drifted a couple of degrees off the uh, of the desired track. All right, time uh, time's up. So now we start the uh, right turn inbound to the landing threshold. Uh, so at this point, it, we're transitioning our uh, view out of the cockpit. We're looking for two whites, two reds, which we have. We'll probably get uh, three reds now as we come around the corner because we're just probably just going to fly a little bit too far away but two whites two reds still looking good so we don't want to descend yet until we get past the 90 in this case still looking good still looking good still two whites two reds still two whites two reds starting a gentle descent it's probably a touch too much there okay two whites two reds Yeah, there's three reds. It's just centered a touch too much, but that's fine. I'm just going to overshoot the center line by a tiny, tiny amount. That's fine. All right, there's two whites, two reds. Get that flight path vector onto the landing markers. We're on speed AOA is good. And there we are. So you can see that circuit worked out really, really well. And, I mean, that is just because the timings work out really well. Uh, so if you know if you know the formula, you could pretty much apply this to anywhere. And like I say, I mean, normally you'd have a tailwind, and I guess if this wasn't the mission editor, I'm guessing it's something to do with the Cypress map and the Mirage, some sort of bug. Uh, but if you could set a tailwind on your initial approach, I mean, that would make it much more realistic. All right, flare out. Touchdown, keep the aerodynamic braking going. Keep it going. And touchdown. I've got to uh, turn my mirror on for you guys. Looks much nicer. The mirror in the Mirage is so cool now. Like, you can actually see the pilot moving the head. It's freaking awesome. Um, also, I don't know why. But for some reason, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like now you see the rain droplets, obviously, and they're amazing when you get to low speed. Um, but when you're flying at high speed, you used to have like rain droplets or the effect of rain droplets as well. And when you're external view also, but for some reason now it's just completely disappeared. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but um, yeah, it's just gone. Right. Taxi off here. Let's get the uh, taxi light on. Lighting lights off. But yeah, look at these effects. Isn't that just. Whew, that is amazing! Yeah, DCS is looking ace. The only thing is, we need some Vulcan multi uh, multi threading going on because even with a 3090, um, <laughs> there's still occasions where I am really suffering. And especially if I'm recording, like right now, I, I bet you the recording doesn't come out anywhere near as smooth as what I'm getting on the screen, which is a shame. 
So here is good old Acro Theory and uh, Urga Media, as much as I love them for doing this, they have kind of screwed up the position of these hangars here because if you look on Google Maps, these should be much closer to the center of the taxiway because look at this. This corner is just way too tight. Like that is, I mean, I actually need to get off the center line to try and make it. Right, let's get the landing or taxi lights off so we don't blind the crew. Also, another thing we should have done is we should have turned the radar off, uh, or silent at least, because otherwise we're going to give them cancer. But I think this guy here, unfortunately, hasn't escaped that already. I think we've already given him a little bit. Um, it's a shame. Sorry, man. Sorry, I forgot. Sorry. Um, here we are then. All right, it's looking nice. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So inside, right? Inside, rain droplets, great, cool. But where's the rain outside? Nothing. That's it for this video, folks. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, obviously, as I say, you can apply this technique to pretty much any airport with uh, any sort of instrument approach. I mean, typically, this would be used when there's high terrain on one side. And uh, you've got a fairly low cloud base, you just need to break cloud cover for your uh, circling uh, minima, uh, which, you know, today was 800 feet. And of course, typically you'd have a tailwind on one side, which is why you can't land on that side. Um, that's why you're doing a circling approach. So uh, maybe it's the mission editor, probably if you do it in some other map or some other aircraft, it'll work. Uh, if you want to try the F5, that'll be a good challenge for your instrument scan. Uh, but uh, the Mirage is also, you know, Mirage is quite easy to do it in, uh, so it's, it's always good practice. No matter what you do it in, have fun. So that's it for me. Uh, please uh, subscribe to future videos if you enjoyed this one. I am working in the Mirage demo. I know a lot of people have asked, so that is coming very, very soon. So don't worry about that. But for now, I shall catch you in the next one. Adios.